first, Coach Oates is up there just really gushing about you, what you bring to the table, your energy sure. level, just kind of how every day you're not too high, not too low. Yeah. Um, the fans that are just meeting you for the first time, what, what are you bringing to Tuscaloosa in this program? Uh, you know, I'm bringing a very seasoned, poised player. You know, this is my fifth year of college, so uh, I kind of know what to expect. You know, I know I'm going to be able to help these younger guys out, and that's that's really what I want to do, honestly. I'm, I feel like that's where I got to take a big jump at, you know, my leadership as far as being vocal. Like, I, I feel like all the on-the-court stuff is going to take care of itself. Um, so, yeah, that's, how, that's what I'm bringing to Tesla. Aaron, what have you seen so far this year from Ryland Griffin? Uh, Ryland, uh, so what I've heard as far as his leadership, last year they said he, like, you know, an incoming freshman not really showing much leadership and stuff like that. So Ryland has took a big step in being a leader. He looks like he's a lot more comfortable. He's very aggressive, and uh, he's just going to keep peaking. I feel like he's he's just going up right now. So. What, what did you see when you were, you were watching Alabama from afar last year, the journey they had, and ups and downs, but yeah. what made you attracted to Alabama? Um, you know, ultimately I would say they're winners. You know, through all the adversity they had, they still continue to perform and win at a high level. And then I would say Coach Oates too, you know, just the type of guy he is. Um, he's very, very authentic. He keeps it real with you. And that's kind of what I was looking for. You know, he didn't try to sell me anything when he was recruiting me. He kind of just kept it real with me. And that's what I was ultimately looking for. What's the biggest difference going from Oregon to Hofstra to now in Alabama culturally? Uh, I would say going from Oregon to Hofstra, I like I would say very selfish of myself. I wasn't really connected with that Oregon team like that. So um, I can't really take much from there. But from Hofstra to Alabama, the culture is pretty much the same. I feel like as far as, you know, work ethic and just how everybody approaches the day and stuff like that. Everybody comes in every day, works really hard. Um, very, very elite players around me. So yeah, that's probably what I take away from it. What's it been like transition to this system? Uh, it's been really easy because, honestly, that's another reason why I came here, because of the system and how I want to play. So adjusting to the system wasn't really hard at all for me. When you entered your name in the portal, how quickly did Alabama reach out, and what was the initial conversations like with the coaching staff? Uh, coach Oates was the very first coach to call me. I, and I, I was in class at the time. I left class to take his call. <laughs> and he kind of just, you know, introduced himself. You know, I obviously already knew who he was and everything, but he introduced himself and just told me that he was interested and that he would like to uh, just keep getting to know me and recruit me more. And then I kind of talked to him for like five minutes, but uh, I had to go back to class. So I kind of spoke to him after that. But, yeah. How much did the NBA come up in that conversation? With him? Uh, so that was another reason why I did choose to come here, you know. He proposed to me that his goal for being my coach is to get me to that next level. He said that's ultimately his goal. And, uh, you know, a lot of coaches, well, not even a lot, no other coach that recruited me kind of really talked about my next step. You know, they kind of just talked about what I can do for them for this year only. So, <clears throat> Aaron, what are you seeing from Nick Pringle so far? Uh, Nick Pringle is a very elite big man, very elite. You know, he's very athletic. And, you know, if for anybody who's seen his numbers last year, you know, shooting 85% at the rim, like, uh, all that is real. And I think that Nick Pringle is going to have a great year. He's going to be big for us all year. Look at this roster. You came, you came with your backup mate, Mark Sears, uh, and you guys are representing Bama today. Uh, how have you kind of gelled with him and, and the chemistry? You guys look like you're going to be the backcourt this year. Yeah, uh, me and Mark, honestly, I would say it's kind of started off the court, you know, Soon as I got here, you know, he kind of took me in and just like uh, showed me the ropes of how they do things here and kind of just built that bond to make it easier on the court, you know what I mean? But being on the court with him, is, uh, it's really fun playing with a guy like Mark who draws so much attention, you know, like I'm not really used to playing with guys who draw so much attention and who can really uh, like get to the basket at will like Mark can. So uh, I feel like we've been gelling really well and I think that like, everybody's going to see that pretty soon. What was the uh, training camp slash boot camp experience like a couple of weeks ago for you guys? Uh, it was really fun. Uh, that was really, well, I never did nothing like that before. 
that was good for our, you know, team bonding. We kind of, you know, got to be around each other a little bit more. Uh, spent, you know, three days together, uh, just doing activities within the boot camp. You know that where you have to like use your teammates and you know work together. So I feel like that brought us together, like bring our chemistry together even more. What was the hardest thing y'all did together? Uh, I would say. Well, this one that we did, it was it was a more individual, but we ran like a whole like two miles, like a, in an obstacle course, and like we had to run through water, crawl through mud, and all this other stuff. So, me, I think that was the hardest part of the whole thing. You look at this roster. You look at the new coaching staff. What do you see as this team's biggest challenge coming into this season? Um, I feel like with any team or any new team, really, the challenge is. You know, just seeing how y'all going to play together when it's time to play a different team. Um, from practice, I think we look pretty solid. But like I said, it's, it could be totally different in the game. So I just feel like putting those pieces together and like finding the right rotation is probably going to be big for us. You guys are fifth in the SEC preseason coaches poll. Are you kind of using that as a motivational factor? Uh, I would say, yeah, for me. Uh, for them, probably probably adds a little bit more fuel to their fire because they was number one last year. Um, I kind of approach things like that. I don't really pay attention to the media. I feel like a lot of that stuff is opinionated. Um, so like I said, I kind of try to stay away from that and stay away from, you know, feeling any type of way about stuff like that. So, Have guys like Mark and the guys that are returning from last year's team mentioned that at all, like a fuel to, to not have a drop off? Uh, no, they haven't really spoke about it, but just being a human, like I know what they're probably thinking. I mean, they were number one overall seed in the tournament last year, so to be fifth in the SEC is crazy to them, I would think so. Who's been the toughest cover in practice so far for you? Uh, Mark. Mark, he's a... And why? He's a dog, man. He, he goes hard, you know, every rep, every possession, you know, and it's tough really guarding a lefty, like that's, it's really tough guarding a lefty. Like I haven't really guarded too many lefties like myself in a long time. So just adjusting to guarding somebody that's left-handed is really challenging too, I feel like. Aaron, with the success of the program over the past couple of years, especially last year, how excited are you to be a part of a community that's really been invested in playing in front of a crowd like that in Coleman? Uh, you know, that's, that's gonna be really big for me. You know, just coming from a smaller school, you know, like we have a lot of supporters, but it's like they don't really come to the games or like it's not really like that packed or like have an environment like that. So just to be able to play in front of a whole bunch of, I mean, a whole bunch of people with a big crowd that's cheering for you, it's going to be super exciting for me. What was it about, what was it about Alabama that uh, made you decide that that's what you wanted to do? Uh, so it's funny, like I already knew that I wanted to come here, like, New probably when I first entered the portal and like once Coach Oates was the first coach to call me, I kind of had it in my mind, like this is probably like definitely a spot that I would want to be at, you know. But I just didn't know like how Coach Oates was as a person or anything. So once I kind of got to fill him out, you know, and just really take in what he's about, it was pretty much an easy decision for me. Um, I came on my visit, and as soon as I got here, their hospitality and you know how they took care of me and my family was it was real big, and that's what that's what drew me in. Like that's what sealed the deal for me. Did you watch them play much? I know you're playing, so I don't know how much you get a chance to watch. But did you watch them play over the last couple of years? Did you like the way they played? Yeah, I liked. Well, especially last year. I mean, they were pretty big all year last year. So um, I watched like a lot of their games and um, I would say, like I said earlier, that's part of one of the reasons why I did choose here because of the system and how they play. I think that I would fit perfectly in this type of system. So. Aaron, uh, Nathan didn't have much of a staff this season. Where did you kind of fall in that timeline of when you were considering Alabama? Like, how much was it just purely Nate recruiting you, and how much was uh, just that kind of process with the yes. kind of building staff at the same time? Yep, so um, I would say when Oates first called me, it was him and maybe like two other guys on the staff at the time. Uh, 
Christian Pino was one of the coaches. And then I believe um, Adam Bowman, he was on the staff already as well. And, uh, you know, those guys just kind of reached out to me and kind of just was talking to me, uh, introducing herself, you know. And Coach Oates, he was talking to me the whole time, uh, every day. And he, I would say, but Coach Oates, that's another thing that really drew me to him, you know, his consistency. He was very consistent throughout the process of recruiting me and after, and still is now. So, uh, yeah, that's it. How much did that hustle too. play into, I mean, the fact that he basically had to do it all himself at that point? How much did that play into you, like, yeah, I'm going to play for this guy? Uh, it just showed me a lot, you know. It showed me that uh, he really wanted me. He think that I was a necessity for this program. And, you know, you want to play for a coach or somewhere where you're needed and they feel like you're needed. So that was big for me. Yeah. Did you ever mention Dan Hurley? You know, you know, St. Benedict's and history from there. Just what's it like going to New Jersey basketball in Alabama? Uh, he didn't mention Dan Hurley at all, but uh, St. Benedict's, that was – that was a time for me, man. Uh, I did one year there, but it was pretty fun being there, you know, playing on a national schedule and all that type of stuff. So. What did Blue Collar mean to you now that you've been in the program just a little bit? Uh, Blue Collar, that's, a, that's another reason why I did come here because everything within the Blue Collar is kind of who I am already, you know, as far as culture-wise and everything. So, like I said, it was really easy to make a decision from that standpoint, as far as what I'm looking for in the culture of a team, even though like Coach Oates didn't really have like a coaching staff and all that stuff, like I said, I knew what I wanted within the culture. And that's what's, what those guys brought. What's a New Jersey basketball player bring to Alabama? <laughs> uh, I spoke about this before, but I would say that I'm I'm just coming in to lead lead the young guys and be that older guy, you know, that seasoned guy that's been in college for five years, you know, that helped them out with any anything pretty much on and off the court. So, yeah, that, I think that's my biggest thing that I'm going to bring to the table this year. You've been to a couple of different high schools and four different colleges. Do you get used to kind of going to a new place and having to work your way in at all? Yeah, so I went, I only transferred one time in high school, but obviously in college I've been around. Um, I kind of just, the way that I look at it, um, I've been like a, underdog you know since high school and coming into new places playing for different AAU teams so I kind of bring that mentality everywhere I go even when I was having success at Hofstra I still kind of keep that underdog mentality you know and I'm just I'm gonna be able to show everybody that here in Alabama this year. What does it mean to have the transfer portal available to you now in a much greater sense than it was a few years ago players to kind of pick their spots every year? Yeah I feel like it's kind of a blessing and a curse the transfer portal and just with being able to not have to sit out, you know, you can kind of move around and kind of fill out a few colleges and everything. But like I said, I think it's a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's good for some kids. And then, you know, it's not good for some kids who just, they don't want to like take on the challenge and you kind of work for minutes. I feel like once it gets to that point where they're just running from competition and stuff is when it's bad. <clears throat> What did you do to get better this summer? Was it different than prior summers? Uh, nah, I don't think so. I just, I kind of touched up on everything, you know, kind of just keeping my game sharp, how I've been for the past two summers. And then obviously uh, coming to the SEC, I wanted to, you know, work on my body a little bit more, get more stronger, be able to play against, you know, more tough and physical guys. What did you hear about the SEC? What did I hear about it? Yeah. Uh, very athletic people in this conference. Right. Very athletic. Coach Oates said that you're one of the, most, the highest finishing per percentage guards at the rim that he's ever had. What's your mentality getting to the rim and uh, just uh, we'll, just talk about that being a part of your game? Uh, honestly, I just feel like that's a, you know, New Jersey slash New York thing. You know, we finish at the rim. I mean, y'all could probably see that from a former Alabama player, JQ, Javon Quinnell. Um but yeah, that's just, that just comes from, you know, just growing up in a playground, in a park, you know, kind of just all that playing around with the finishes and stuff. Like, all that stuff, to me, it really comes natural. Like, I don't even really work on my finishes and stuff like that no more. Like I said, it's just natural at this point. Do you have a relationship with JQ, or do you have conversations with him before, uh, while you're making your decisions? Uh, yeah, I spoke to JQ, and basically he told me, 
about Coach Oates. He had nothing but good to say about Coach Oates. And, you know, him being a Jersey guy, I, I took that in. And kind of, I think, I really, I took it in, like, with him being a Jersey guy, like, it means a little bit more coming from somebody else that's also from Jersey, you know? So. Did you know him growing up? I didn't. I didn't know him, but I was a big fan of Jelly Fan growing up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>